Good morning. Good morning. Our processional hymn today is number 483, The Head That Once Was Crowned With Thorns, and we will sing five verses.
call it to today's earlier program. O God, your Son made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. First lesson, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This is Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcome this message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us recite the psalms responsibly, alternating verses. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined my ear to me whenever I call upon him. The chorus of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. <coughs> How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the depth of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your hand. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. in this morning is printed in your program 
Emmaus bound on Easter day. Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. <coughs> While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, and their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it, was, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So we went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Would not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, 
has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. surrounding Jesus' life aren't so important in the long term about did it happen exactly in this way. The story gets retold because it has a larger purpose. Think about this. Two of the disciples clueless about what's going on. They had hung out with Jesus. He taught them face to face. And they still didn't get it. And he had to unfold from them from the beginning the teachings, the scriptures, as it referred to him. And when do the eyes of faith finally see him? When he takes the bread blesses it, breaks it, and shares it. The fourfold action of the Eucharist, to take, bless, break, and share. Every Eucharist has those components. And then they finally see him and know him in the breaking of the bread. And the breaking of the bread is code in biblical terms for? The what? Communion. Communion. The Holy Eucharist. The Last Supper, the Divine Liturgy, the Mass. It is what holds the Christian body together. Gathering together as a community of faith to recount the story of God's love for humanity as it is focused in Jesus Christ. Is this all that strange? We do it Sunday after Sunday. And some people go every day. But think of your own personal life. Let's just bracket the whole religious dimension for a moment. On Easter weekend, I gathered with the family, the larger family, cousins. We hadn't really gathered together in a while. And it's great to gather with the family because you tell stories. And guess what? We all remember them differently, don't we? Yeah, some, some people are heroes, and what about her aunt so-and-so? Oh, she was a real piece of work. <laughs> but it's important that we gather together in whatever community that defines us to tell the story. The sacred story of the Connolly clan was rehearsed on Easter. 
But there were bits and pieces that people had a little differently than I remember them. So, of course, I availed them of my information. And I was likewise instructed on what I did not remember correctly. We'll see how it all turns out in the wash later. But we need each other to hold us to account. Because sometimes we can take a little part of the story and run away with it because it's entertaining and we'll twist it. You know, as my brother always says, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. So, but I use that as an example. You gather with family, you tell stories, you keep the story alive, and you correct one another. And you come to a deeper understanding and appreciation of those in your family. Now, there was a particular story shared on that occasion, a, short, uh, a story of hurt that others needed to hear, but also a story that needed to be built upon. Someone who was sort of cut out of the family and then rejoined many years later. The void needed to be filled, and it happened. But the same thing applies in this family we call God's family, the church. When we gather together, we rehearse that story. Now, last night we had a baptism. And one of the things we do at a baptism, as you can remember, is we do the baptismal covenant. We also do the baptismal covenant on All Saints Day. The baptism of Jesus is another one. What is it? We did it recently. Easter. Easter Vigil. The baptism, and of course, you good Episcopalians can all recite from memory all five of the baptismal promises. But I'll only ask you one. What's the first one? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of the bread, and the prayers? And the answer is? Yes. yes. No, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. <laughs> but it's code language, folks. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of the bread, and the prayers? So when I gather with young families that want to have their child baptized, I muster every ounce of Irish guilt that I have, and I say to them, you're making this promise, not to me, because I'm not gonna lose any sleep if you don't keep this. You're making this promise to God. Yeah, and that's how you shovel guilt. <laughs> right? But seriously, this is the code language, the scriptural language, the apostles' teaching and fellowship the breaking of bread and the prayers, we gather and we remember. And let's face it, remember you're all, you know, when you're kids, you're starting to hear the stories of the Bible and you scratch your head and you're like, really, Mom? Did you understand it? No. Did you have a different understanding of some of those stories than you do today? Most definitely. So we have a growth in our understanding and appreciation. Look, I went to college. I was a Christian theology major. And I didn't get it. the whole notion of grace until, much, until I hit the wall and had no answers. And then all of a sudden, I had a new understanding. Because I wasn't Mr. Smarty Pants after all. I had to acknowledge I didn't know. I was at the limit of my resources. So many of you, growing up, grew up in the church, and you had a certain understanding, and you might have gone on hiatus, right? But you come back at a different point in your life, and you see things differently. You have experienced life, and you've got that experience of life and the story of Jesus and you're weaving it together differently than you did as a child. It's only natural. But here's the thing, and I say this to the young families who want to baptize their children, or when I'm trying to push baptism, 
and the life in the church. And they say, oh, I'm going to wait until they turn 18. They can make a decision. They're not going to know the story. What are they going to have to bounce it off of? What's going to awaken them to certain questions? We're all on the road to Emmaus. And we need to know the story, whether or not we understand it. Because one of these days, we'll encounter the risen Jesus in a stranger. And that encounter will be like being hit with a clue by four. And it will shake us up, and we'll see the world differently. And all of a sudden, these crazy stories we heard as a kid <coughs> about this carpenter from Nazareth are going to mean something different. But we <coughs> have to be exposed to the story if we're ever going to be awakened to its deeper meaning. Okay, so what's the moral of today's sermon? Get out there and share the story! Okay, and just, just a little guilt. <laughs> <laughs> But you see where I'm going, just to appreciate in your own journey, be it to Emmaus or to IHOP afterwards for some pancakes, that the truth can emerge in the strangest of ways. But we need something to build on. We need each other. We need the church to tell the story, and we need to be a part of the story. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God.
Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. Accept our prayers and lead us to heaven. Amen. Lord of the gathering feast, you walk with us on the shadow road. Burn our hearts with scripture's open flame, and veil our darkened eyes as bread is torn and shared, and for the broken fragments, and from the broken fragments, bless a people for yourself. Through Jesus Christ, the host of the world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So um, we have the parish brunch next weekend and the weekend after that. And I understand we'll be having it Memorial Day weekend. So don't fret if you weren't invited away for the weekend to come to the brunch. Um, so Ruth, do you have an update on the last fair? I had a number of about 2,100. That's about what I have. So that's just an update, 2100. Um, and the next fair is coming up quickly. So May 20th, book cookie plant. So we need all three books. Ask your neighbors and friends and everybody. They can um, drop them off at the rectory or hopefully bring them Sunday morning. If there's so a large, large upstairs. donation, they can call and we can meet them. Yeah. But otherwise, it was just a few bags dropped off the rectory porch. So that's great. We'll take books. We're going to start sorting them soon. And cookies, we did really well the last couple fairs. So if you bake them, we will sell them. How should we package them? <laughs> In threes or sixes. Threes are the best because then people can mix and match. And plants. So things that are starting to sprout, maybe you can dig up and pot them, maybe you can start some seeds, we'll take it all. And if you have any kind of outdoor, you know, a lounge chair, outdoor furniture, plinths, is that the word? Little statuary for the yard, yard and garden <laughs> stuff. Gently used, <laughs> not destroyed, gently used. Yeah. <laughs> So we've done really, this is one of our biggest well, they, fairs because people really <laughs> like books months. and there's the plant crowd and then everybody likes cookies. <coughs> so okay. if you make cookies ahead, you can freeze them, you can get in touch with me and we can put them in the freezer at the parish hall, which is now locked. So it's secure. Yes. There was an, uh, an issue of somebody going into cookies last time. It wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> the hand of God, it wasn't me. Confession time? No, 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 no. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Um, all right, so I think that's good. Uh, I will be away at clergy conference next week. They've changed the venue. It's not as glamorous, so I won't. Don't worry about me having fun. I think they've got a conference center at the old Fort, the Fort Devon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, out by Concord. Yeah, Acton. Yeah. yeah. They got a prison there, too. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no comments. <laughs> all right, so that's all I got. Does anyone else have an announcement? No? Let your light so shine before others that they can see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Oh, just by way of uh, the communion hymn, the hymn that's listed, it's the right words, it's just a different tune. It's a more familiar tune, 
but it's not the tune that Ed and I were thinking of. But anyway, you'll know. <laughs>
thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave him thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country we have the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed John the Evangelist, and all your saints. We may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the peace.
the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.